us, and it's time again to do it with Hewitt. I'm actually here with Ben McLaughlin. We just finished a powerlifting meet, the actual Ontario Provincial Championships. Ben did awesome. We actually didn't finish the competition until like almost midnight last night, so we're both pretty tired today. But I want to get this quick video out to you because something that came up uh, uh, around the competition um, was the topic of stretching. And Ben was asking me, you know, what stretches should I do before, uh, before the contest? Uh, and there's also a lot of strong opinions around this. Uh, but I don't think you should base your training or your training methods around opinions. They should be based on research and science. And that's why I wanted to make this quick video to talk to you about my opinions or my approach to stretching. So first of all, what you probably already know if you've read some of my articles and seen some of the study that I linked to, uh, I believe that you should avoid passive stretching altogether. Except in certain cases around injuries and whatnot and rehab, uh, I would leave passive stretching uh, and I have strong reasons for that. So uh, what we did for, with Ben before the competition, because he did have some tightness in some areas, is we used some basic uh, muscle testing to see what was weak, and we addressed the weakness instead of the tightness. Okay, so why is that? Well, studies have shown that passive stretching, especially pre-competition or before training, can actually make your muscles weaker temporarily and create more instability around the joints. And this can increase risk of injury. You don't want to do that before going into competition or a heavy, intense workout. But if you're currently using static stretches before training or competition, you do want to do something to replace that. And what I recommend is isometric exercise to activate or engage the weak links rather than stretching out the tight muscles. And then also using active range of motion stretches. So this is isometric or active stretching rather than passive static stretching. Applied kinesiology muscle testing provides a reproducible way to assess the effect that your flexibility training has on your muscles. For example, I'm using this lateral flexion test here to assess Ben's uh, lower back strength, the multifidus and QL, and as you can see, he's testing weak after he did his static stretching and his foam rolling. I'll post some links on this video as well as down below in the description section about uh, muscle activation technique, uh, some information about the effects of stretching, as well as some isometric exercises that you can employ. But as you can see here, what I'm doing with Ben is a, a static hold or an isometric contraction of the, of the target muscles, the ones that tested weak, uh, and to, to get them to, to fire again, to, to engage them. Uh, and he will test strong after I do this on each side, an isometric hold. Uh, now, I'm just doing it once for about five seconds here. He's, he's pretty well trained. He responds quickly. But, I mean, for someone that's just starting out with this, you may need to do a longer isometric contraction, even up to 10 seconds, and repeat it about three times to engage those target muscles. I'm not going all out, just enough to get them firing. And now Ben's testing strong again here, and so that's also going to increase his range of motion. To give you another example of what I'm talking about, imagine uh, someone with weak glutes. Typically with weak glutes, what you're going to see is above and below the joint, muscles are going to tighten up to try and compensate for that lack, lack of hip extension. So your lower back muscles and your hamstrings will tend to get tight to try to stabilize at that joint and to make up the lack of extension there. Uh, so rather than stretching your lower back and stretching your, your hamstrings, you're going to address the weakness in the glutes. The whole idea of reciprocal inhibition is a little bit misunderstood. It's like a chicken or egg argument. Which came first? It's actually the weakness that is causing the, the compensation, the compensatory mechanism of the tension or tightness. So you want to address the weak links. You want to activate and engage those weak links and the tension will dissipate on its own rather than stretching out the tight muscles and then leaving your joints or your, your muscles completely unstable. But a lot of people argue, well, it feels good and everybody's doing it. Like my trainer's doing it. Uh, a bunch of the other strong lifters in the gym are stretching before they work out. Uh, they're doing a tons of passive stretches. Uh, and it feels good. My response to that would be, if there was a supplement that you took before training that would make you feel awesome in the gym and it would relax your muscles and make them feel great, but research was demonstrating that this could make you a little bit weaker and actually increase risk of injury, would you still take it? Like if everybody else was using this supplement, would you do it? If research was backing up the fact that it wasn't the best way to get gains? No, I don't think you would. So uh, my suggestion would be, to look at the new research around this, to think a little bit outside the box, and at least be open-minded to different approaches. That's just my thought for today. I wanted to fire that off to you. Until next time, stay loose.